anyone who says that cold calls don't work doesn't know how to do them. But having said that, there's still a lot of practical and realistic issues around them. So let me try and distill 40 years of experience in getting past the gatekeeper into just a few minutes. Um, it's worth watching through to the very end because this is no filler. There is content all the way through to the last minute. So keep watching all the way through if you want to find out how to get past the gatekeeper and earn yourself the chance of making effective cold calls. I'm from the age before the interwebs, when telephones had wires and people had business cards made out of pulped wood. Here's the thing, I have built several multi-million pound businesses almost entirely off the back of cold calls, which involved getting past a lot of gatekeepers. One of those businesses was my own executive search firm. So cold calling works. If you're gonna sell anything that's high value, the only way to do it is that at some point, one human being has to talk to another human being. That's how influence at the highest level really works. Yes, you can market, you can sell, you can connect with people through social media and lots of other platforms, but ultimately, the ability of one human to talk to another is what really works, particularly when it comes to building trust in something like recruitment, which is entirely about being able to put yourself in the hands of another person. So, part one of getting past the gatekeeper. Why get past the gatekeeper when you can just avoid them? There's a thought for you. Here's the first principle. If somebody's mobile number is on their business card, their LinkedIn profile, their social profile, the company's website, that's in the public domain. And if they're gonna put their mobile number out there, I assume that they want me to use it. So if somebody has put their mobile number out into the world, I will always feel free to call them on their mobile number. And I suggest you do the same. A lot of people go, oh, it's, it's a bit rude, it's a bit intrusive. If they didn't want you to call them on their mobile, they don't have to put it out in the world. So if their number is on their social, their business card, their website, feel free to use it every day of the week, every single time. If you're not using their mobile, if you're calling on a landline, then the easiest way to avoid the gatekeeper rather than getting past the gatekeeper is the simple one of call when they're less likely to be there. Call early, call late, the boss is likely to be there, the gatekeeper may, may or may not be. Um, the person who answers the phone when it's on nightline is quite likely to put you through just because they want to get rid of you. So call early, call lunchtime, call late. Depending on the work environment you're in and they're in, hell, call them on a Saturday morning. If the phone rings at the office on a Saturday morning and you get put through, happy days. If they want you to sod off, they'll tell you. But at least you've shown that you've got some work rate. So second rule of avoiding the gatekeeper, Call early, call lunchtime, call late, if it's appropriate and if you really want to, call weekend. Is this making sense so far? Um, and if it is, and if it's being useful, hit the like button. Um, and if it's generating any questions, uh, feel free to put those down in the comments and I will answer every single question uh, directly. Part two of getting past the gatekeeper. If you have to talk to the gatekeeper, because the mobile number isn't available to you and the calling early, calling late doesn't work because they're there all the time. They live under the desk, they never leave. In which case, be professional, be polite. Nothing more than that. I know there's a lot of stuff out there about trying to befriend the gatekeeper, trying to make me a best friend, trying to build rapport with them. Well, rapport, yes. Befriending, no. Absolutely not. I completely, totally, utterly disagree with anybody that has that viewpoint. It's, I don't have that because um, it, you know, it makes you look weak or whatever. No, that's nonsense. Talking to another person, status is irrelevant as far as I'm concerned. But the more you talk with somebody, the more you befriend somebody, the more information you're going to give them. And the reality is that the more information you give somebody, the more likely it is that you're gonna give them reasons not 
to put you through to the decision maker. So for me, it's a pragmatic decision. If I'm talking to the gatekeeper, I'll be polite, I'll be respectful, I'll be professional, and I will be as brief as I possibly can. One of the common questions that I get whenever I'm doing training on this is, well, well what do I say when they first answer the phone? Well, they say hello, you say hello back. But I, I guess what people mean is, when they say, when you say, hi, is Dick Jonas spot in, please? And they go, oh, who is it calling? Now, if this is the first four or five times I've made the attempt, what I prefer to say, rather than telling them initially, what I prefer to do is say, oh, is, is Dick J not spot in at the moment? Or is Dick J not spot in this afternoon? Well, yes, they are. Who's calling? Well, yes, they are means that I should now launch into the other tactics I'm going to talk about in a second. If it's, oh, no, they're not. Oh, not a problem. I'll call back another time. Or, not a problem. When's the best time to catch them? Now, why would I do that? Um, simply because um, they may or may not recognise my voice, but they'll pretty certainly recognise if I give them my name and it's the fourth or fifth time I've been calling. So I want to be brief, I want to be polite, I want to be professional. They answer the phone, I'll say, hi, is Dick Jane not spot in, please? Oh, who is it calling? Oh, is, is Dick Jane a spot in this afternoon? Oh, yes they are, but they're tired of in a meeting. No problem, I'll give them a call back later. Simple as that. Second rule, never ever lie. You can be a little ambiguous, perhaps, but never lie. So you get the typical question, oh, will they know what the call's regarding? Oh yeah, they should do. Now, they should do, and when I've spoken to them, undoubtedly they will do, or they should do, and if they've been looking at all my social media, they will do. It's ambiguous, but it's not lying. Now that's as far as I personally would ever go. Um, one of my favorite, favorite experiences, um, if you can imagine a recruitment office, we've got the desks lined up, um, we've got 22 people, um, all of whom are spending half their day doing cold calls. And uh, one of my colleagues, uh, Malvina, she does the, the vertical slam dunk, she just bang, slams the landline down on the desk, boom. This, she was working with a handset rather than with the uh, earpiece. And uh, she puts the phone down. She says, I'm going to change my name. All right, what's the problem, Marvin? Oh, I've been trying to call this guy for, for three months, just can't get through to him. I'm going to change my name, to, my name to his wife. What? When the receptionist says, who's calling? I can say, it's his wife. And she'll put me through. Now, no. Funny at the time? Yes. Do I recommend it? No. Just, just, no. Never ever create BS stories to give to people. It will never work. On the off chance it might get through, it will then blow up in your face in a massive way. Just, just don't do it. Whatever movies you may have seen, don't do it. If you do find yourself in a situation where you have to pitch to the gatekeeper, never ever pitch the service. Pitch the conversation with the decision maker. Pitch putting you through to the decision maker. If you try and pitch your service, you'll be able to give them enough information to say no, enough reasons to say no, but not enough reasons to say yes and put you through. Now, here's the basic rule that I always work to. If somebody doesn't have the power to say yes, don't ever give them the chance to say no. Think about that for a second. If somebody doesn't have the power to say yes, why would you give them the chance to say no? The gatekeeper is not the decision maker. They can't say yes to buying your service or working with you. What they can say yes to is putting you through and letting you talk to the decision maker. So that is what you're pitching. Your pitch consists of explaining what you can do for the decision maker and why, a reason why you should talk to them. That's it. 
you pitch that they should put you through so that you can have a conversation with the decision maker. And that's your pitch. If you want to know more about pitching and presenting ideas, have a look at one of my other videos about pitching and recruitment. And speaking of pitching, before I tell you the most important and powerful technique I've ever learned to deal with gatekeepers, let me ask you a question. Do you want to get really, really good at every form of cold outreach? Do you want to master cold outreach and generate a stream, a steady stream of inbound inquiries and connections? If you do, you want to download the Billing Accelerator. The link is down in the description underneath there. It's a seven day program which will give you all the critical skills, all the critical strategies that you need to be really good at developing cold outreach techniques and strategies and building a wall, a barrage, a stream of inbound inquiries at the same time. So let me go on to what's known as the Penfold Technique. Dum, dum, dum. In case you don't know, Penfold is a character from the kids cartoon program, Danger Mouse. Penfold is Danger Mouse's sidekick. And back in the day, we had a colleague, one of our um, consultant team, who looked exactly like Penfold. Just, just did. Dressed like Penfold, glasses like Penfold, just Penfold. So strangely enough, that was his nickname around the office. Um, but Penfold had this technique. And I'm gonna preface it by saying, um, I'm one of the most qualified NLP practitioners and trainers in Europe. I've worked in and studied behavioral psychology. Hell, I've even taught behavioral psychology at universities. And I don't know why this technique works. It sends me nuts, but I don't. I do not know why this works, but having used it for nearly 15 years and having taught it to tens of thousands of people, I know it does work and it will work for you too. So let me explain the Penfold technique. It consists of finishing every sentence with thank you. So you call the receptionist, call the gatekeeper, call the PA, call the executive assistant, you decide to give them your name. Oh, who is it calling? Oh, it's Stephen Long, I'm calling from the Stephen Long group. Thank you. Okay, um, will they know what calls regarding? Oh yeah, they should do, thank you. Okay, um, uh, have, you, have you spoken with them before? Not so far, thank you. And that thank you, it, it does something, it's a full stop. It's, it's the end of the sentence, it's the end of the conversation, and you can hear somebody's brain clicking and whirring and then they just stop and put you through. And I don't know why it works, but it does. I have never, in all the years I've done this, gone past five thank yous with somebody. It's, it's, like, a, it's like a Darren Brown magic trick. And having, you know, I was trained at the same time as Darren Brown by the same people as Darren, uh, that trained Darren Brown. And it's like a Darren Brown magic trick. It just clicks a switch inside somebody's head. Oh, well, they know the call's regarding. Um, they should do, yeah, thanks. Uh, okay. Um, who, who is he calling? Oh, it's Steve Long from the Steve Long Group. Thank you. Thank you. Full stop. Nothing else. No fillers, don't do anything other than breathe in and out. That's it. It works like a charm and I don't know why. If any of you have, ex have an explanation or a viable theory, I am all ears, I promise you. But that, that Penfold technique is the most powerful thing I've ever used with gatekeepers. So let me just summarize the whole thing together. Why get past the gatekeeper when you can avoid them? If you're going to speak to the gatekeeper, be polite, be brief, be succinct, say thank you at the end of every response you give them, at the end of every answer that you give them, 
never, ever pitch your service. If you have to make a pitch, never, ever pitch the service. Pitch why they should put you through to the decision maker. And, and this is the most important thing I can ever, ever give you. Be persistent, never stop. Is there a, a functional limit to how often you can call? Yeah, but that's based purely on the investment of your time. If somebody is worth talking to, put the time and trouble and persistence into talking to them. Is there a limit to how often I call? Depends how important the call could be. If the call's business critical, I will keep calling. If it's not, I'll call four or five times, leave it a month, come back again another four or five times, leave it a month, come back again another four or five times. I'll call early, I'll call late, I'll call lunchtime, I'll call mid-afternoon, mid-morning, but I will persist. If somebody's worth talking to, I'm gonna to talk to them. At some point, they and I are gonna have a conversation. They won't necessarily buy from me, that's a whole other conversation. They won't necessarily become a candidate, that's a whole other thing. But if I really wanna to talk to somebody, at some point, they and I are gonna have a conversation. And that's what I suggest to you too. Remember, if you want to get really good at cold outreach in all its various forms, Click on the link below for the Billings Accelerator. It's only seven pounds for seven days of world-class coaching and content. There's lots of extra resources and tools and goodies in there as well. If this video has been useful for you, like it, click subscribe, hit the notifications bell so you don't miss out on the recruitery goodness that will come out every week for you. And go out there, be persistent, be polite, go talk to some decision makers.